should be played in high volume. This should be played in high volume. This should be played in high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. What up? What's happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And this next guest you can see all this weekend at Side Splitters Comedy Club here in Tampa Bay. On the phone line is comedian Alonzo Bowden. What's up, man? What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I was a bit young because I'm 22 years old when you were on Last Comic, but I have memories of you on it. Very vague, but I've been a big fan for a while now, so it's an honor to have you on. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been 10 years since Last Comic Standing. It doesn't feel like it. Uh, glad to know you thought I was funny even when you were 12. <laughs> well, dude, I was weird when I was growing up. I wanted to grow up real fast and be an adult. Like, I never watched kids' cartoons. I would watch, like, adult sitcoms, adult swim, or last comic. Like, I was a kid that was always sort of trying to grow up fast, you know? Oh, that's cool. I actually, back when I was doing the show, I was surprised at some of the fan mail I got. I remember I got one um, email from a guy. He was nine years old. And it was funny to me because I was thinking, wow, you get this stuff? You know, that's pretty, pretty good for a nine-year-old. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it was a great show. You know, I call it my introduction to America. I had a great run doing it. And, um, and now here I am, live in Tampa, where it's only 102. So Dude, that's nice. it has not been this hot out in a while. Are you a fan of the hot weather, or can you go without it? I actually it? am. I like, but... but Florida hot is different than L.A. hot, you know. Um, L.A. hot, the southwest, it's hot during the day. The sun drops and the nights are perfect. They're like, you know, it's like 100-degree days and 80-degree nights. Florida, it's 103 during the day and then 101 at night. So it's a little different. (laughs) <laughs> Isn't it weird, too, as a comedian at tours, I can imagine at one time you're in a cold city. Let's say you're going from Cleveland to Tampa. Isn't it odd when you're in a cold town three hours previous, and then once you're in Tampa, it's 105? Is it weird to have that transition when you're a flying I've, comic? I've done that so much, especially when you're doing wintertime gigs. Like, I've had things where... um where I'll do a, a cruise, okay, in the yeah. Caribbean, and it's, you know, in February, so it's 80 degrees, blah, blah, you get off the ship and then fly to New Jersey, and it's 18 degrees, and I'm like, I'm glad I don't live here. No disrespect to New Jersey, but the, the Northeast and the Midwest in the wintertime, it's brutal, and it, and it's funny because people are always telling me, like, Oh, make sure you have a coat. It's like, what are you kidding? I have winter clothes. I travel all the time. They think that because I live in L.A., I'm going to go to Chicago in January with shorts and a T-shirt and say, oh, I didn't know. (laughs) Yeah, and the thing, too, is you grew up in the New York area. So were you a fan of the cold weather back then, or were you happy to get out? No, I love I love the West. You know, there's a lot of things I hear in California that make me laugh. Because people, here's the thing about L.A., right? For some reason, it's not cool to say you like L.A. Like, you, you live in L.A., you have to complain about it. Now, me, I love it, okay? I, is your show, are you rated G, or can I tell the truth here? It's the podcast. You can say whatever the fuck you want, bro. I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things, when people say, I miss the change of seasons, I'm like, bullshit. No, you don't. So you say that because it sounds like the right thing to say, but I promise you in February, when L.A. is considering 60 degrees cold, you are happy you're not in Chicago or Des Moines or Buffalo or wherever you came from. You know what I mean? It's like you, you don't. You just – humans weren't – listen, we, we don't have fur, okay? Yeah. Granted, granted, some people from northern Europe are a little hairy, but we don't have a coat of fur. So 
stop pretending you're happy it's cold. <laughs> and you know what's weird, too, is I feel like people that were born in Los Angeles are the same as the quote-unquote Floridians down here. They don't know how good they have it. They're like, I want to move to a place with four seasons. I'm like, are you sure? Have you dealt with negative 20-degree weather when you have to shovel 10 inches of snow? I feel like when people are born in nice weather, they take it for granted all the time. Well, it's because they've seen snow on TV, right? Yeah. If you ever watch TV snow, it's always beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's light and fluffy. You're in. There's always a fireplace. You're always watching it snow. They haven't. They haven't walked through four day slush. You know what I mean? Yeah. When it snowed four days ago, it melted a little. Now it's gray. It's mixed with salt. They haven't had to shovel a car out at five in the morning oh my to God. get on a slippery street. You know that. Talk to people who live with snow and tell them snow is romantic. They will slap you with a shovel. They will literally hit you with their snow shovel and say, romance this. <laughs> and what I love, too, is they think it's so much fun to go sledding. Yeah, when you're 12, but once you get to high school and you actually grow up, then you hate snow because, as you said, you have to get up early to go to work, and driving in it is atrocious because what I hated, Alonzo, was they would make sure that the main roads are fine. The main roads would have no snow, but every neighborhood would have so much snow, man. It's not a good life. I have to say. There are two things about that. One, high school is the worst because that's the age where it's your job to shovel your parents' car out. Oh, my like God. You're not driving. Yeah. You just have to get them out. But I, got, I was lucky in that respect. My dad was a foreman for the Department of Sanitation of New York. So when the snow plows would come down the main street, they would detour and literally plow our street. <laughs> So there was a little bit of a benefit to having a dad who worked for the department. Yeah, that does seem like a good thing. I feel like people that work in the Midwest, that work in snow, are some of the most underlooked hard workers. It can't be a fun job plowing snow, you know? No, it's, it's a bitch. Anybody who works outside, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what they do. If you're working outside in the cold and in the snow, it's more of a hassle to do your job, whether you're driving a delivery truck or clearing snow or, you know, whatever. And um, and those are the people that they never interview about the weather. You know, they never talk to them. Even the weather people, you know, if, you, if you're doing weather, listen, if you're doing weather in Tampa or L.A., how hard is your job? Right. You know, <laughs> it's a hot woman. Like, I don't just in L.A., the women who do weather in the morning, they look like they just left the club and came to work. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I was clubbing last night, but I just wanted to drop in and tell you it's going to be warm and sunny today. I mean, crazy hot women do weather, right? But when you're doing the weather, whenever there's a snowstorm in Minnesota and they send that poor bastard out there and he just has to stand <laughs> outside and tell you it's a blinding snowstorm. You know, the guy in Chicago who has to tell you that the wind chill is 31 below. I'm like, you know, I could tell them that from indoors. I don't have to stand next to the lake to tell them how cold it is. So, yeah, well, you should have, I don't know, you should have been cuter. Well, you know what's weird, too, is I feel like within the next 20 years, the whole idea of local news is going to go away because I probably haven't watched the news for the weather in maybe 10 years because I can get the weather on my phone or on my laptop, you know? I feel like the whole idea of the local news is kind of dying. No, I don't watch the local news. I watch to see the woman do the weather. I don't even have to have the sound on. You, you don't, you're not listening to me. It's like watching Latino TV. I don't know what they're saying, but it's a great show. <laughs> Dude, you can just watch that and be mesmerized. I mean, the, the girls on those shows are gorgeous, dude. And what's funny is they're like, they're doing mundane things. You know what I mean? Like they are giving the weather report or it, it's a commercial for some, you know, it's some ridiculous show. And this incredibly hot woman is in your life. This is this is just funny. It really is. It's great. So, what do you think yeah, they would so, be like on a date? Do you think they'd be a lot of fun, or would they just be kind of a boring mannequin? You know, it, it's different ones. I actually, um, and this was so funny. I was in Phoenix. I was doing like Good Morning Phoenix or whatever it is, 
And the host of the show, who was a you know was a hottie, tried to fix me up with the woman who did the weather on the show. She was like, "You're single, wait." She, and we walked over and we invaded her space, and I was like clowning around the map and stuff. Yeah. And this woman was was hilarious. She had uh, she had been a basketball player at Arizona State. She's like five ten, beautiful, and she laughed and played along, and she was very cool about it. You know, but then you have the others. You have some who are don't acknowledge me as being beautiful. They almost want to act like it doesn't exist, you know. And then you have some who, like you said, they're the beauty queens and they are the high maintenance. That I think in L.A. you would get one that's really high maintenance because she wants to be an actress. And for whatever yeah. reason, she didn't make that cut. So she's kind of bitter about it. But in other cities... They they might be cool about it or I don't know. The one I met, you know, the girl I met and girl, woman, female. I got to be careful. You you don't want to get in trouble for saying the wrong thing. There'll be protests <laughs> at your podcast. He called the meteorologist a girl, son of a bitch. You know. So, and what the female meteorologist that I met was very cool and very sexy. I think that's legal to say. That does sound pretty legal to say. And what I want to ask you, too, is you made up the point that a lot of these people that are on TV really want to be actors. How painful is it when you see these people in Los Angeles and they're like, I'm here to be an actor, but I'm working at Dunkin' Donuts right now. Do you kind of feel bad for them knowing that they're out of their mind? No, here's the thing. This is what you find out. If, If you think you're unique, go on an audition. Okay. Yeah. Then you're going to find out, oh, there's a bunch more. Like, and that, that applied, like, because L.A. is where, you know, the most beautiful woman from Des Moines, the most beautiful woman from Kansas City, the most beautiful woman from a hundred other towns came to L.A. Halle Berry came to L.A. from Cleveland. Can you imagine that day when she got off the plane? <laughs> you know, how many women were like, yeah, well, that's over. <laughs> you know? Halle Berry was in Cleveland. Yeah. That, that would be like, there were probably traffic accidents. You know, Halle probably had to leave. They were probably like, listen, we can't have you walking around this city too much. You know? But, and I'll tell you my personal experience. They used to send me on these athlete auditions, you know, for like commercials and shows and stuff like that. I would be the only guy in the room who hadn't been at least an NCAA Division One athlete, if not a pro. You know, I met more pro athletes in auditions than than I ever. You know what I mean? It's it's how it works. So, but but in LA, you could tell the people who are really doing it versus the bullshit artists because the bullshit artists talk about it. The people who are really doing it never talk about it. Too busy working too busy working you know you're you're on the road you're in the studio you're doing 14 hour days on a tv show granted there's a lot of perks to it you know it's a great job but you don't sit around in the bar say hey you know i'm on such and such show when you hear that you're like oh you're an extra yeah and what i see too is i'm a big fan of local comedy here in tampa bay and i have a bunch of friends that are local comics So I'll go to their open mics, and the local comics take their five to ten minutes seriously. But there's so many guys that go up there and waste everybody's time by just fucking around. How annoying is that when these people don't really take the art of comedy seriously, you know? It it bothers me, not on the open mic level, it bothers me on the professional level. Like, I'll give you an example. Michael Richards, you know, prior to his racist meltdown. Yeah. Michael Richards was an actor. Michael Richards a TV star. Michael Richards doesn't need to be doing stand-up. He wasn't any good at it. That's why he got pissed off and everything, you know? And it's like, look, man, you got yours. You made millions. Leave art. Let us do ours. You know, you, you get people like that, or you get somebody like, you know, from a reality show, or they got two million YouTube hits, and now they're headlining a comedy club. And you're like, you know something? Don't, don't. Don't fuck with this. You know, now some people who work at it to learn to do it, that's cool. You know, or some people have a show that they bring to the club. Listen, I love doing um, Adam Carolla's podcast live. You know, he'll do live podcasts 
in comedy clubs and theaters. That's a different thing. That's you're bringing in a show. But when you just think, well, I'm famous, so I can do stand up and I'm going to go tell rambling stories that go nowhere. Yeah, that's annoying as hell. Speaking of Adam, he is obviously the king of podcasts, but you do pretty well yourself with your podcast. And what I want to ask you is, how do you approach your show to make sure that people notice it? Because it seems like everybody, if it's an open mic comic, if it's an A-list actor, or if it's just an athlete, everybody has a podcast. So how do you make yours different? Well, the, the best line I heard was when somebody told me podcasts are the new jury duty. <laughs> you know? I never thought of that. <laughs> and the meaning that, you know, you have to do them and everybody has one and so on. I, I, my podcast, my fans like it and I appreciate that. I go more in depth on news stories. It isn't always funny. It's called Who's Paying Attention, by the way. And I like talking about current events. It might be jokes. It might be more serious. Um, it, there's a lot of word of mouth. I try to the one thing I try to do to keep people listening is keep it short. Yeah. Uh, a lot of podcasts are these self-indulgent two hour ramblings, particularly with comics. Comics are, we're, we're really guilty of this. Like two comics say, yeah, man, let's get high and just talk. And there's, you know what I mean? And that's, that's not a good podcast. Now you have some people like you talked about Corolla, Joe Rogan does a three hour podcast it's a three-hour interview with one person. It's not even an interview. It's a conversation. But it's super interesting because Joe is an interesting guy, and he'll talk to you about things outside of what you do. You know, if you're a, you're an MMA fighter, he'll talk to you about your life. If you're a comic, he'll talk to you about real stuff versus just telling jokes, you know. And I got to say, yours, this is very cool, too, because we're actually talking. It's not a setup. You're not goofing around trying to be funny where there is it. There's plenty of funny podcasts. I'm not knocking that, but so I try to keep mine real and just talk to people and I try to get it over with quick. I don't want to waste a lot of your time. What I uh, want to know too is a lot of comics will go to small towns, major towns, media markets, and all those towns have the hacky morning shows that try too hard. When you're going into these towns and you're told to go on these shows, how do you make the best of it? Because there's a ton of like shock jocks or well, morning zoos. I got to tell you, unfortunately, and I and I mean this, unfortunately, they're they're going away. Yeah, there's always the morning zoo, the AM crazies, the the wacky morning goof, goofball show with Pez and the Doctor. Because they always have a, you know, he always has a nickname, right? He, he's the Doctor. Or the, or the smack man or whatever, you know, whatever he is. And, and he's been the smack man for 30 years. So the smack man doesn't look too good. He doesn't look like the guy on the poster. The, the, the good thing about those shows, though, if they have a local following, it gets people to the club. Yeah. What I do is some of them are cool and they let you do your thing. And others, the smack man's worried about you being funnier than him. So he'll step on your joke. And then I just go into interviewing myself. I just talk over him and do my five minute segment, get in a few jokes and leave. You know, what are some uh, of the shows that have helped you out over the years? What are some of the best shows that have really had your back? Well, uh, like I said, Rogan's podcast is great. Adam Carolla's podcast is great. A, a, A beautiful example of one of those shows you're talking about up in Rochester, New York. There's a guy, uh, Brother Weez. I'm friends with Weez. I love Brother Weez, dude. Weez is amazing. Like, Weez is the living embodiment of a radio DJ. And when you do two hours on Weez's show, you sell tickets. Plain and simple. Weez sells tickets. Uh, uh, Bob and Tom have been great over the years. You know, I don't do it as much as the local Midwestern comics, but I do it every year. I do it a couple of times. Yeah, that, that's another great one. And now I've been doing Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which is a news quiz show on NPR. I've been doing it for the past three years. And every show I do, more and more fans are coming from that. NPR, which is somewhere I never would have thought of, has been great to me and for me. That makes sense because you have a wide range of listeners. You have the Wacky Morning Zoo listeners, you have the Shock Jock listeners, and then you get the NPR listeners. So that's probably why you're so successful is you have a wide range of an audience, you know? Yeah, I um, 
The only thing, and and I was just, uh, I don't know if you know Jesse May Peluso. I haven't um, heard of him. It's her, Jesse May. She's very funny. Yeah, it's the new generation of comics. She's, she's in her 20s. Yeah, I think she's in her 20s. But anyway, she's from the social media world of comedy, you know, and that that is the new thing. Like now, the new comics coming up. When I say new, I'm say I'm gonna say comics in their twenties and thirties. They have to build a YouTube following. They have to build an Instagram following. I'm a little too old for that. I wish I could get in that. You know, I wish I could be on Snapchat. But I'm of an age where if I'm not if I didn't if I'm not monitoring my own child, it's a little creepy for me to be on Snapchat. You know, like hey, what's this old guy doing creeping around here? You know. Well, you know what's weird, too? What's weird, man, is I've been doing this show for about 14 months now, and it does pretty well. But ever since I've been doing Facebook Live the last three weeks, I have people from high school, I have people here in Tampa that go, wow, you do a show. It's weird how our attention span is so quick that you basically need to do a video on every platform to grasp their attention, you know? Right, and you have to do them all the time. And and the thing is, what we consider, like, things that people don't consider interesting, like Jesse May was joking about, there's some woman who has this workout thing on Instagram. It's called Mom Squat. And what she does is she holds her baby and does squats in the kitchen, like doing, you know, kitchen work, whatever, right? Yeah. And I'm like, so women have been doing this since they've been babies. Like right? you, you everyone see the woman holding the baby on her hip, walking around the kitchen, you know, picking through it. This woman figured out I'm gonna call it a workout and she gets a million fucking Instagram hits, you know? And it becomes a business. It, it's it's so funny. There's there's a guy and it, it's the most hilarious thing, the man bun guy. Have you seen this guy? Oh, he's the worst. The big Fabio looking guy. This is this is what my talent. This is what I do. I tie my hair in a bun and I shake the bun out. <laughs> and I tie my hair in a bun and I sh- and and you're like people are watching this. You know now it's become a joke, but for a long time, you know, I guess there were women like, oh wow, now, you know, somewhere Fabio is saying this is bullshit. Wait a minute, he moved in on my action. Well, you know what's weird is we're all about looks. It can go the same way with that awful family known as the Kardashians. It just seems like we're all about looks in 2016. We're very fake, you know? Well, you know, people always have been. And and listen, the Kardashians, I've reached a point where I ain't mad at you. You know what I mean? If you figured out a way to make money, God bless you. Now, Now, I don't really know much about the Kardashians other than Kim is hot, got a great ass, a sex video, whatever. (laughs) But people I know who know, I have one friend, she's really into all of that reality TV and this and that. And apparently the mother in the Kardashian family is this brilliant marketing person that built this multi-million dollar empire. And, you know, listen, it, I will say this for Kim. It's not like she ever said she was anything else. Yeah. You know, I used to love that about uh, Pamela Anderson. You know, Pamela Anderson never came out and said, hey, I'm I'm jiggling right now, but I really want to do Shakespeare with feeling. No, Pamela Anderson was like, "Look at this! Look at look at this!" And that that's what she sold. She said, "Pin me up on the wall." You know, I'm usually dripping wet for no apparent reason, and you know, I respect that. Good for you. Yeah, you know, has has Kim Kardashian and the Kardashians dumbed down America? Yeah. But I can't blame them for it if they said, if they were like, people want to just watch us be spoiled, self-centered people. Okay. <laughs> I, I, how do you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it's fucked up, but, but this is how we get Donald Trump for president. Because we live in a reality TV show, so the reality star won the game. I don't think people realize, dude, that Trump's going to win because... During these debates, I've already got it imagined and in my mind. He's just going to say Benghazi, 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 and every American's going to be like, yeah, Benghazi, and they'll have no idea what it means, and he's going to crush her. I predict it. Uh, Ryan, I I think you're – got to completely disagree with you on this one. You think so? Because 
This is what I think is going to happen. This, this is my faith in America. The grown-ups are going to come out on election day. See, see, during this part, it's all a lot of talk, right? And, and the loudest people are the dumbest people. You know, like they're yelling, like you said, they're yelling Benghazi and, and you know, whatever. I've even heard that Hillary, supposedly, I, I guess Hillary murdered some people and covered it up. Like I've heard, you know, you hear all these crazy shit. But just like in the last election when it looked like it was going to be close between Romney and Obama, and then on election day, Obama won easily. I think on election day, the grownups come out and they're like, well, you didn't really think we were going to let Trump be president, did you? <laughs> they're like, what are you, fucking crazy? No, I didn't have time to run around yelling, but I know who to vote for. So I, And, and that's where my whole who's paying attention vibe comes from. It's up to the media. You know, if we still had real media and real reporters, yes. they, they wouldn't allow Donald Trump to exist. They'd ask him real questions and his whole campaign would fall apart. That's the problem. And that's why I don't respect TV media is because they just sort of have become a tabloid to me. TMZ changed the game where you have to report 24-7. And I feel like with social media and our attention span being very short, that it's made the media, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all of them just kind of dumbed down over the last few years. I'll I'll tell you, and this is just, uh, I'm going to go old man on you now, but it was before TMZ. You know when it happened? It happened in the 80s. It happened when CNN and Fox News came out. And they were 24-7 news channels, and they had to fill that time, and they had to get rating. You know, suddenly they were up against regular TV to get rating. And the thing about 24-7 news, interesting shit isn't happening 24 hours a day, seven (laughs) days a week. It's just not. So now you have to fill the news with stupid shit. And you have to fill the news with, you know, such and such celebrity got arrested or so-and-so is on drugs again. You know, nobody gave a shit about this, you know? And like I say, with sports, ESPN has turned into, like, the view, you know? I, oh, listen, my God. It's gone downhill, it's, dude. It's horrible. It's horrible. It, it's unwatchable to me now because I just – I remember when there were highlights and funny and clever sportscasters, you know? And you could tell that they were fans of the sport. Now – I don't even know what it is. I don't know how to describe it anymore. But, uh, yeah, so, so this cycle, it's been going on for a long time. And, and, you, and even reporters, you know, reporters didn't used to have to be beautiful. Let me tell you something. Walter Cronkite was not a pleasure to look at. Not a bad-looking man, but not an Anderson Cooper on his best day. You know, I, I don't think that uh, Edward Murrow had a stylist. <laughs> yeah, you know? to me, ESPN officially jumped the shark when the show his or hers had is it lit, yo, when it came to a Kevin Durant dunk this year. And they had a whole yeah. segment where they're like, was that lit or was that not lit? And I was like, Michael right. Smith, dude, you're 29. You're not a millennial. What are you doing talking yeah. like a 14-year-old? It, it was just embarrassing because whenever I go to the gym – Every TV has it on, and all the macho guys go crazy over it. And I just roll my eyes because since I sort of work in the media, I just see the weirdness in it, you know? Right. You know, it was great. Like when Stuart Scott first came out, yeah. And Stuart Scott was dropping hip hop phrases, but saying that, like, the way he would say them, like it was a regular sentence, made it even funnier, you know? But uh, and that was his thing. And he but then everybody said, oh, OK, we got to speak hip hop. We got to throw this and we got no, <laughs> you don't like it's not you. It's not you. You know, so and, and the, the other thing, you know, that ESPN said all their best talent is leaving. Oh, I know. You know. Have you seen Everyone's Bill Simmons out? new show on HBO any given no, Wednesday? I Dude, it's pretty good, man. You can tell that they're letting him be him. I feel like ESPN yeah. was scripted. He had an interview with Anthony Anderson and Chris Bosh, and ESPN would have made that cornball. Dude, it was some of the best TV I've seen in a while. And who would have thought that Chris Bosh would be a good interview? Yeah, Chris Bosh is an interesting guy. I, I heard him talk some about he had, like, heart problems or something. Yeah. And it limited how much he could play, and he was upset and talking about it. Yeah, so that was – 
But that's the great thing when you allow an athlete like that to have an opinion, you know. So, but yeah, ESPN. Ugh. The thing too and, about yes, the sad thing is yeah, nothing filled that gap because Fox <laughs> Sports is even worse, you know. Oh yeah, they came in and they're like, "We're going to be better than ESPN," but they've just become ESPN. It's like, come yeah, on. yeah. It's, uh, I think that's ESPN's motto for next season: um, "We're better than Fox Sports." <laughs> and what I love too is, <laughs> come on, we all know this. Skip Bayless doesn't believe anything he says. Skip Bayless is the WWE of sports journalism. That man is a well, genius. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't believe that LeBron sucks and that Tebow was good five years ago. He just does it because it riles people up and he has five million followers. Skip Bayless yeah, is a genius. Stephen A. Smith. Oh Stephen A. Smith annoys the hell out of me. <laughs> I, but I love, I love when they get smacked down. You know, yeah. Like when Stephen A. Smith was talking about Kevin Durant he was like, I was talking to my boy, Kevin, and blah, blah, blah. And Durant went on and said, I don't know Stephen A. Smith. He doesn't know anything about me. What the hell he thought? That was hilarious, you know. When I don't know if you saw when Mark Cuban took apart Skip Bayless. Oh, it years was, ago? That was great. Was, yeah, over LeBron when Dallas won. It was beautiful because Skip was just sitting there like, I, 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 I. And then Cuban looks at Stephen A. Smith and he says, and don't you say anything. And Stephen A. was like, I'm not in this. <laughs> I find sports I journalism to be weird too because these are the guys that never played sports or if they did they were backups in high school so they feel like they know about sports because they've spent their whole life watching it you know yeah that's my problem with Stephen A he talks like he's been in the league it's like you were a backup guard in a you know uh, I think a division two college you do not know what it's like to be in the game with LeBron. You do not, you know, that's why I respect when Barkley, Kenny Smith, I mean, that's why that show is the best because Shaq, Barkley, and Kenny Smith were there. They played on every level. You know, when I'm listening to Reggie Miller talk about Steph Curry, I'm listening to a shooter talk about a shooter. You know, I, I don't really need um, Stephen A to tell me he talked to his boy. Wouldn't you agree that Chris Webber is one of the most underrated basketball analysts out there? Oh, I love Chris. I, lo- I love Chris Webber. I love what he has to say. Uh, he's got a sense of humor about it, but you can tell he's been there. Yeah, Chris is great. Um, also, they, You know, it's another thing they need to do, and especially with the NCAA tournament. Listen, uh, Vern, whatever, and Bill Rafferty, like, if you were announcing basketball when they had peach baskets and they took a ladder and took the ball out of the peach basket, it's time to let it go. You know, let the younger guys announce it. Let's get, it, it should be someone who played in the NCAA tournament talking about the NCAA tournament. I'm tired of these. And the college basketball and college football is where you see it. These guys who were like, they may have coached, you know, back in the 60s or something. You know what I mean? Like, Stop it. Stop. You, they have no idea how the game is played now. You know, back when they were involved in the game, like when when uh, Bill Rafferty was involved in basketball, the dunk was amazing. It was an unbelievable move, and it shouldn't have been done. You should be throwing chest passes or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> now, what I want to ask you is, you're a very funny guy. You have a ton of opinions. Why should people come see you this weekend at Side Splitters? Because I am a break from reality. I am I am the voice of reason in a world of noise. I'm, I'm going to talk to you about some things that are going on in the news, some real things, and I'm going to talk to you about some ridiculous shit. I promise you will leave laughing. Whether you agree with me or disagree with me, you're going to leave laughing. You know what? I've got Jesus approval. Yes, Jesus has laughed at my jokes. He said it's okay for the gays to get married. We if, talked about it. If Jesus has laughed at your jokes, then you've officially made it. Go see Alonzo <laughs> Bowden this weekend at Side Splitters Comedy Club. That is SidesplittersComedy.com, 12938 North Dale Mabry Highway. That is 12938 North Dale Mabry Highway in Tampa Bay. And call them at 813 813- 960 1197. It's 813 960 1197. Well, Alonzo, man, 
Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a lot of fun. I've always loved your laid back attitude and how you never really sold out or got cocky. But it seems like a lot of times that happens in entertainment. Well, thanks, Ryan. This was fun to do. I will do this every time I'm in Tampa. Sounds good, bro. Standing standing off for the talk. I was talking to my boy, Stephen A. Smith. And he said, you should listen to Ryan Hopper's podcast. <laughs> you know, he was kicking it with LeBron up in Kobe's house when they was getting in Derek Fisher's grill. And have I thrown enough in there? I don't know. I'm through bullshitting. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning on the, the Wacky and the Smack Man. <laughs> Sounds good. And then after that, we'll hang out with the T-Man, you know? <laughs> All right. Thank All right, you, thanks, Alonzo. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. And that was the one and only Alonzo Bowden as he called into Hoppy Hour. You can go see him all this weekend at Side Splitters. There are a ton of times to see him, so there's no excuse not to go. It's Thursday at 8.30 p.m., Friday at 8 and 10.15 p.m., Saturday at 10.30 p.m., and Sunday at 7 p.m. So if you're saying to yourself, I want to see great comedy, I want to have great food, I want to be around a great environment, trust me when I say... Side Splitters Comedy Club is the place to be this weekend. Go to 12938 North Dale Mabry Highway. That is 12938 North Dale Mabry Highway in Tampa Bay. Or call them, 813-960-1197. It's 813-960-1197. And their website is sidesplitterscomedy.com. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. Happy Hour.